Hi friends, if you are viewing my channel first time, please subscribe to my channel for more updates on embedded systems. Today we are mainly discussing about on some CAN protocol basics. Today's agenda types of CAN frames. We have different types of CAN frames which are defined in the CAN standard. First one is data frame, second one is remote frame, third one is error frame, fourth one is overload frame. We will be distributing these many types of CAN frames in a CAN network. We will be discussing one by one in the next slides. First one is data frame. When we will use this data frame? For example, if I want to send the data from one CAN node to another CAN node or one CAN node to multiple CAN nodes, we should always use the data frame. Here we have standard CAN frame format and also extended CAN frame format. We have two types of CAN frame formats. One is the standard CAN frame format and another is the extended CAN frame format. These two standards already we discussed in the previous sessions by field by field. Okay, today we are, if I want to represent this standard CAN frame format in the data frame, so this RTR bit should be zero. Similar way, if I want to represent extended CAN frame format also as a data frame, so this uh, RTR bit should be zero. A remote transmission request bit always should be zero. Then we will call it as data frame. Okay, and also we should send all fields of data from one node to another node or one node to multiple nodes. All fields of data means start of frame and arbitration field, control field, data field, CRC field, acknowledgement field, end of frame. We should always send bit by bit all the fields of data from one node to another node or one node to multiple nodes. This is mainly about the data frame and the remote frame. When we will use this remote frame, for example, if I want to request the data from other node to the our node, so we should always use the remote frame. For example, we have CAN node A and CAN node B, both are connected in a CAN network. And if I want to request the data from node B to node A, so we should always use the remote frame. And here mainly the difference between data frame and the remote frame here RTR bit should be 1, remote transmission request bit should be 1 in the standard CAN frame format and also extended CAN frame format also this RTR bit should be 1 and uh, here there is no data field in the remote frame. If you see the data frame we have the RTR bit and also data field but here we have only the RTR bit there is no data field in the remote frame. Why because we are requesting the data from the other node. That's why there is no data field in the remote frame. These are mainly difference between the remote frame and the data frame. And if I go further, we'll be discussing about error frame here. We have two types of error frames. One is the active error frame. Another is the passive error frame. Okay, if my controller state is error active, I will be sending the active error frame. If my CAN controller or the CAN node is in the error passive, I will be sending the passive error frame. Okay, here uh, we will be discussing more on when our CAN control or the CAN node is moving to different states. For example, always our uh, CAN node or CAN control is in the normal state. Whenever I want to send any data frame or remote frame from the CAN node, okay, uh, for example, there is no error during the transmission, always my CAN node in the normal state. For example, during I see any error during the transmission, maybe due to the distortion in the network, maybe uh, due to the error, uh, normally bit error or the CRC error, my frame got corrupted. Maybe data frame or the remote frame got corrupted during the transmission. So my CAN node generates some error. Okay, so it will increment greater than my error count greater than if it is one. So my CAN node or CAN control will moving to the error active state. If my error count still, for example, uh, my CAN node is in the still error state, so it will keep on generating the errors. For example, if my error count is greater than 128, my CAN control or CAN node is moving to the error passive. This is how we are representing the different states. For example, if my CAN node or CAN control is in the error active, so I will be sending the active error frame. So if my uh, can controller state is error passive so I will be sending the passive error frame so if we have less error count so we'll be sending the active error frame we have very much high errors greater than 125 
then we will be sending the passive error frame this is only the difference between the active error frame and passive error frame and we will be discussing about an error frame format here we have error flag of 6 bits and again error echo of 6 bits and the last one is error delimiter always 8 ones 8 receive bits in the active error frame even in the passive error frame also error delimiter is always 8 receive bits and if you see active error frame we have 12 zeros here and similarly if you see the passive error frame 12 ones here here 12 dominates bits here 12 receive bits and here error flag we will be sending always continuously zero in case of active error frame for example uh, we have in the in our can protocol we are uh, following the nrz uh, encoding stuffing uh, rule okay here uh, nrz stuffing rule means for example if i am sending continuously five zeros if the sixth bit also zero then we should always invert uh, from 0 to 1 this is as per the nrz encoding technique as per the bit stuffing okay here we are violating the bit stuffing encoding technique okay normally in case of can protocol if i send continuously five zeros from the controller if the sixth bit also zero then i should always invert zero to the one then i send one as per the nrz or bit stuffing rule Okay, but we are violating the bit stuffing rule. That means we are violating that uh, bit stuffing rule in case of error frame. Okay, we are sending continuously six zeros. So we are violating the bit stuffing rule. Due to this one, the other nodes also get uh, generate the errors. That's why here we are calling it as error echo. Okay, here what is it means? For example, we are sending continuously six zero. That's why we are violating the bit stuffing rule. Why? Because as per the bit stuffing, if continuously five zeros, then I should invert the sixth bit. This I this bit I should send it as one. But in case of error frame, we are sending continuously six zeros. We are violating the bit stuffing rule. So due to this error, bit stuffing error, so other nodes also generate the error frame. Okay, that's why here we can call it as error echo. Okay, here that's why we are calling it as superposition of error flags here uh, all the receiving nodes all other nodes other than generating the error which is generating the can node for example node 1 is generating the error flag remaining nodes will generate the error echo due to the violating the uh, stuffing error okay here uh, that's why we are calling it as superposition of error flags we have all the receiver receivers all the other nodes will generate the error that's why we are calling it as superposition of error flags and here combination of all error flags and the last one is error delimiter if i want to restart the communication if i want to retransmit the data so we will be using the error delimiter similar way in case of passive error frame we have continuously uh, six ones due to this one we will be violating the bit stuffing rule okay for example if we have continuously five ones if the sixth bit also one we should invert to zero but here we will be sending continuously six ones then we are violating the bit stuffing so due to this one all receivers also generate the error okay that's why here error echo of six bits okay all receivers also generates the error all other nodes that means okay similar way here we have error delimiter to restart the communication for example whenever we detect any error during the uh, remote uh, frame transmission or the data frame transmission so uh, we will be transmitting this error frame and uh, completion of error frame we should always retransmit the uh, which is corrupted one okay this is the mainly use case of the error frame for example uh, during the transmission of the data frame or the remote frame uh, due to the uh, uh, distortion in the network maybe crc or the bit error uh, we should transmit the error frame Okay, after the error frame, we should always re retransmit the older data, destroyed data. This is the mainly use case of the error frame. And the next one is overload frame. We have similar way overload frame also we are representing as per the active error frame. Here we have 12 zeros. Similar way I am representing 12 zeros in the overload uh, frame. And also here we have eight ones eight receive bits here we are uh, following the syntax of the active error frame in the overload frame 
here mainly overload frame when we will use for example i am receiving some data from the other network to process this received data at protocol level so we need some delay okay uh, to process uh, this data so we need delay so that's why we will transmit which is having the uh, delay in the uh, processing so that node will transmit the overload frame for example i am receiving the data from other node i received completely uh, to process this received data we may take some time okay if the if this node is busy then this guy can send the overload frame okay this is the mainly use case of the overload frame and uh, we will be sending this overload frame during the intermission field for example we have the two data frames between the two data frames we have some intermission field we have the gap okay during the gap we will be sending this overload frame so uh, so other nodes also will wait for the transmission due to this overload frame so if we want to delay the transmission so we will be always using this overload frame and uh, for example uh, here there is no retransmission takes place for the older data previous data there is no retransmission takes place if we send the overload frame for example if we send the error frame the old data which is corrupted one will be retransmitted in the after uh, completion of this error frame but in case of overload frame there is no retransmission of the older data why because we are sending the this overload frame between the data frames or remote frames that's why here there is no retransmission takes place in the overload frame here if you see the frame format here we have overload flag of uh, 6 bits here continuously 6 bits of zeros so we are violating the bit stuffing error or the nrz uh, encoding so due to this all other nodes will generate the error that's why here we have continuously again 6 zeros and finally overload delimiter here we have again 8 ones 8 received bits so we'll be retrans uh, we'll be reinitiating the communication using this delimiter and we can send maximum of two overload uh, frames between the two data frames or the two remote frames this is a mainly use case of the overload frame if i want to give the delay between the transmissions so we can use this overload frames okay that's all friends thank you for watching thank you